Hello, friends. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Professor James Stephen Curl's The Egyptian Revival, Ancient Egypt as the Inspiration for Design Motifs in the West. Now, at 572 pages, this is a formidable tome on the subject, and we're going to be doing a whirlwind tour of the book here. Professor Curl's premise is that the ancient Egyptian world has had as much influence on Western Civ aesthetics as ancient Greece. And it's a compelling point, especially considering that the pyramids were developed in around 2500 BC, a full 2000 years before the apex of the ancient Greek civilization. Obelisks, for example, figure very prominently, and they are an invention of ancient Egypt. As Curl states, the civilization of the West that developed from the Greco-Roman world, from the elaborate organization of the Christian church and its close connections with secular power and the legitimizing of that power, and from the vast cultural stew of the lands around the Mediterranean Sea, drew heavily on the religion of ancient Egypt, a fact that is often over ignored, glossed over, or claimed as exaggerated by commentators. Throughout the Greco-Roman world, Egyptian deities were worshipped, and they exercised an enormous influence on other faiths, notably Christianity. It may be this that has led historians, who ought to be objective, to shy away from the obvious. And what Curl is alluding to there, of course, is that that considerable influence of ancient Egypt would be upon Christianity itself. Isis is the mother of of the god, queen of heaven, wise and cunning. She's the great goddess of Egyptian culture, ancient Egyptian culture. And her brother was Osiris, um, who was murdered by Seth and was reborn as the living water. Have you read John in the Gospels? There are many recurring symbolic decorative motifs in the book, including these yore which are cobras, and referring to the glossary, which Professor Curl always writes amazing glossaries with nice, small, um, yet very descriptive images. And here we see in the glossary, the yore are representations of the sacred asp, cobra, or serpent, which are used to strike any enemy of Pharaoh. What's very interesting are the um, columns and capitals which, of course, predate Greek and Roman capitals by, you know, over 2,000 years. And here we have an example of a papyrus capital. Papyrus leaves were very symbolic, of course, as a reed that was used for early writing. The lion motif figures very prominently. And, you know, that all originates from ancient Egypt, as you can see here in this fountain. Um, that was apparently moved to the Vatican. More lion motifs here. This one is in the capital in Rome. Here we see these very nice papyrus capital um, columns, as well as the very prominent uh, solar winged globe. You can see the vulture wings on either side of this um, solar globe with those. Uh, cobra yore protecting on either side of that solar globe, as well as um, an ankh here, which you know predates the Christian cross. Of course, we see all of that stuff outlined on the opposing page, and this is actually from the Freemasons Hall in Boston, Lincolnshire, um, from circa 1860 to 63. Now, what's interesting that this is from the Freemasons Hall is that, and Curl points this out in a previous chapter, about the hermetic influence um, arising out of ancient Egypt, presumably, and uh, figured in some um, early Roman texts on 
the Hermetic tradition arriving from the god Hermes and how that influenced um, Kabbalistic and, and Coptic elements of Christianity as well as influencing more um, kind of cultish um, organizations like Freemasonry. Very interesting um, progression there from the Hermetic tradition. And some really beautiful color plates here in the center of the book um, with design motifs, uh, vultures, um, very colorful um, capitals here. Now, it's not a stretch to see where the ancient Greek Corinthian order evolved. And indeed, in the glossary, Professor Curl does show um, the Corinthian order here in comparison with some of the um, Egyptian motifs. I find this passage from the postscript of the book uh, very interesting. In post-Newtonian times, when spiritual torpor and skepticism gained ground, Egyptianizing notions, hermetic researches, alchemy, and all the rest of it seemed absurd to the Enlightenment, just as many of the pagans of antiquity found the worship of crocodiles, bulls, and animal-headed deities beneath contempt. Even Octavian, exhorting his troops at Actium, ridiculed Egyptian devotion to reptiles and animals, and later, as Augustus observed, that he worshipped deities, not bulls. Pearl continues, the rattle of the sistrum, that's an ancient Egyptian percussive instrument, and the zoomorphic deities of the Nile could not prevail over the might of Rome, yet they invaded Italy nonetheless, and the great goddess Isis was installed in glory in the capital of the world. Do you enjoy ancient Egyptian design and architectural motifs? Post your comments below, and I'm providing links to Professor Curl's book on Amazon and on his websites in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And thanks for watching and have a great day.